her to miss out. Okay, so thank you, everybody. Thanks for all of that. There's always a few minutes at the first session just to, um, yeah, get it all sorted. But, yes, my name is Katie. So for those that I have already spoken to on the phone with our introductory session, it's lovely to have you all here tonight. Um, and if you haven't had your intro session yet, that's absolutely fine. We'll be doing that on Wednesday. I think everyone is finishing up. So this is the LIFE program. This is what we do. And it's, um, yeah. It's a really great program. I've been one of the facilitators for a long time now and I genuinely still really love doing it. So I'm really thrilled for all of you. I hope that it's a program that you get a lot out of. It's really helpful, sustainable advice. I think like I would have said to all of you, we're not counting calories. We're not cutting out major food groups. We're not here to get our bikini bodies. Unfortunately, Rod, we're not doing that tonight. We're just going to be really focusing on sustainable change. So we're going to be just making permanent things happen for our health and for our well-being. And I just think the information that's in this program is just fantastic because it's really stuff that everyone benefits from learning, you know, because I mean, nutrition and exercise, it's not necessarily something that actually gets taught at schools or it's not something that it's just sort of something we're just expected to learn along the way. And unfortunately, there is so much junky advice out there. So this is just sensible information. So I hope that you guys get a lot out of it. Tonight's session is really just an opportunity for us to come together. Um, I will share some slides. So we'll go through a bit of an intro session, um, just talking about diabetes, risk, et cetera. But yeah, it's just a nice opportunity just to get to know one another a little bit more. So I am going to ask you just to introduce yourself, just to say, you can just say what your name is and where you're calling from tonight. And if you want to say why you're doing the life program, that would be great. I know a lot about all of you now, so I know that we're all here for very similar reasons. Um, but yes, just your name, where you are from and why you're doing it. I'll start. Um, my name is Katie. I am here in Shepparton tonight. So I live in Shepparton with my husband and I've got three daughters. Um, school holidays are going really well. I'm just also really looking forward to school going back again as well. But I'm a nutritionist by trade. So I work here in Shepherd and as a nutritionist. And also I do quite a few public health projects and things. But the life program is definitely a passion project and I love doing it too. So I'm really looking forward to the next 12 months. And I hope that, yeah, that you guys get a lot out of it as well. Rodney, you're my top left. Do you mind introducing yourself and where you're from? Uh, I'm at Rod uh, from Colac, married. Three daughters. Um, oh, same road. I didn't realise. Yeah, and yeah, just doing life for um healthy lifestyle. Now, Rod, your wife has already done the program, hasn't she? Has yeah. Yeah, and she quite enjoyed it. She learnt a bit from it. Yeah, yeah she did. She enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah, awesome. Oh, well, that's good. She'll be there supporting you, I'm sure. She was shocked when then um I told her that I was doing it. <laughs> shocked and pleasantly surprised i'm sure <laughs> yeah good on you rod thank you thanks for sharing that suzanne how are you i'm good thank you i'm in doncaster mm -hmm. and uh um i'm doing the uh, life program because last year i started um doing uh, exercise and looking at what I was eating and trying to work together to get my sleep patterns mm. good so that overall um, I'm healthy. Um, and this program just really neatly draws everything together, um, mm. a bit more formality to it than what I've had previously. So, yep, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, I agree. I think that's a really powerful part of the program is the fact that you are sort of forced to be kept accountable a little bit. You know, you're not just sort of out there floundering by yourself, hoping to find the answers. So yeah, I agree. There is a bit more structure to it. So it is one of the benefits, definitely. Thanks, I wouldn't Susan. have used the, used the term forced to, to be accountable. I think accountability is our own responsibility. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes people feel like they 
yeah, sometimes they want to be accountable, but it can be helpful to be led down the path a little bit at times. So I agree. Yeah, sometimes it definitely needs to come from within. Absolutely. Jerry, are you there? Yeah. Hi, how are you going? Good. How are you? Good. Um, I've got a husband, two daughters and a cat. And my friend has highly recommended the program. So that's that's why I'm here. Ah, oh, fantastic. Your friend's already done the program. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or in the oh. middle of it, yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Do you know who their facilitator was? Mm, don't know. Yeah, no. I don't know. I was just being a sticky bait, that's yeah. all. But that's totally fine. Yeah, no. Nah. Um, good on you. Well, that's great. So your friend's already yeah. doing it and has just yeah. spoken highly of it. Very much so. Very yeah, much so. Yeah, good one. Oh, well, that's good. I'm glad. Well, I hope you get, yeah, I hope you enjoy Thank it you. just as much. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Georgie, how are you? Hi, Katie. Uh, good, thanks. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I'm in Melbourne. I'm in Richmond and just hoping to adopt, I guess, a little bit more healthier lifestyle. Mm. And I've also heard really good things about the program. So looking oh, good. forward oh, good. to it and hopefully, yeah, picking up a few tips. So, yeah, great. Yeah, Do, you great. Do you have any particular health, health goals, goals that you're sort, goals of, working you're sort of working towards? I'd like to lose a little bit of weight and keep it off. <laughs> yeah, that, absolutely. Yeah, that's absolutely. That's the big yeah, bit, isn't it? Bit, isn't yeah. It? yeah. 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 Good on yeah, you. Good that's on great. You. That's Thank great. you for sharing Thank that. Thank you for sharing that. Thanks, Katie. Lee, are you there? I am. How are you? Hi, Katie. Good. Hi, How everyone. are you? Good. I'm in Berwick um, and I think COVID has been my um, tipping point, living alone, adopting some not so healthy habits over the last mm. couple of years and having always been really healthy and low sugar, low cholesterol, all the, the right stuff, then suddenly have a sugar problem. Yeah, I thought right. Yeah, I need to um, intervene. Get get on top of this. Mm, mm. So uh, my doctor suggested I uh, start here. Yeah, fantastic. Oh well, that's great. It's it is a very good place to start, and it's so common that that sort of, you know, that um, on the back of COVID, you know, a lot of people have found that you know, think there's so much disarray going on at that time. So. You know, I think that, yes, really good habits did tend to fall off off the wayside because we were just so challenged in so many ways. So hopefully this is a nice way to sort of kickstart things back on for you, Lee. So, um, yeah, I'm sure lots of us can relate with those things that you just said. Thank you. Thank you. Beck, are you there as well? I am. Hello. Hello. Good evening, everyone. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Not That's too bad. Good. It's Monday. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Um, definitely doing better than last week when I last spoke to you. So that's yeah, great. that's good. I'm glad you're feeling better. Yeah, so it's always a positive. Um, I'm in Reservoir, so northern suburbs. Mm. Um, I am doing this. This came up actually um, as a health initiative through work. Um, oh, as something that they were advertising and saying was out there and basically mm. as a prevention for me with my Strong family history of diabetes and mm, mm. mum take all these tablets and you're having to inject insulin every day. So I kind of want to avoid that. So mm, mm. I'm in terms of trying to put things together for myself to go down that prevention path. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, mm. definitely. And I think that's that's the best approach is prevention rather than waiting until and then having to deal with all the, the stuff that comes with it, just like what your mum's experiencing. Yeah. Um, so that's great. Good on you for taking that step. That's really great. Hopefully, yeah, you'll learn lots as well and we'll, yeah, avoid that path for you, Beck. That'll be great. Very much. <laughs> and finally, Lydia, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi, everyone. Hi, Katie. Hello. Um, I'm um, doing life. I found about life uh, program on uh, Facebook and I found uh, uh, interesting and um, I think this is what I need um, at this moment in time because I also like to avoid, like Beck said, um, I want to avoid diabetes. I had gestational diabetes with my mm. both kids. Um, I've got two children, one um, 
boy and one girl mm. and um, I try to live a healthy lifestyle I also want to lose weight mm. and um, keep a healthy lifestyle and um, um, I think life program is um, organizing my my uh, my program a little bit better to to mm. help me get there where I want to get <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. That's right. Absolutely. And sometimes it is just that it's just, you know, getting that support, getting that group together, and it's sort of um, ensuring that you're getting the right information, but we can all support one another. I think it's, um, it's really nice to feel like you're not, you know, the only one, you're not the only one struggling with these things and finding, you know, bits of it hard. Yeah. So it is, it's a really nice sort of um, small group, but it's going to be really nice. It's really positive. So yes, thank you very much, Lydia. I appreciate it. I hope your children are close to being asleep, if not already. Um, and when you can relax and watch this little presentation. So tonight I am going to share my screen and I will bring up these slides for you all. And then... Can you all see my screen? Yes. Oh, thanks, Rod. Cheers. All right. So tonight, the very first session, so the life program, let's get into it. Now, I can't see you all when I'm in presentation mode, so you can put up your hand or you can also just yell out to me. Don't feel as though you have to be really polite and wait until, you know, the end. If you've got a question or there's anything that you're not sure about, please just yell out. This is a very informal, all the sessions are very informal, but yeah, please make sure that you interrupt when you need to. So just in general, how our life group sessions work, um, as you all did tonight, arrive to them on time you know everyone's really busy and the night times of people are tired you know so we don't want to be sitting around sort of going on for hours and hours I will always make sure that I stick to an hour so they won't go more than an hour um, but yes if you can be here on time even better um, you know as always a mobile to silent just so you're not distracted giving everybody in the group a chance to ask questions and to you know respond in the way that they would like to respond no talking over other people um, no gossip about what has been talked about in the group sessions this one probably doesn't apply so much to our group this current group because we're all from different areas but when I run groups locally in Shepparton it's very common for someone to come along and say, ah, oh, Jerry, you're doing this, you know, and so then that can make people feel a little bit uncomfortable at times. But please know that whatever is discussed in this group stays in the group and you can be very rest assured that you can sort of speak openly. Um, if you can't make it to a session, please do let me know. That's a really important one because I need to record it in your sort of file as such. So not because you're getting a red mark against your name, but it's just so then I can keep across numbers for when I'm reporting back to Diabetes Vic. And look, try try to keep to the topic being discussed, but I mean, always, I mean, I go off on tangents all the time, so don't worry too much about that. Um, this slide is actually a bit of an old slide now. I need to update this one. But basically, it's actually now over 60,000 people in Victoria have done the LIFE program. So huge numbers have done the program. And it's great to hear from a few of you that you've actually, you know, heard from other people that it's happening and it's a good program. That's really promising. Obviously, word is getting around. The program used to be six months as well. So now it is a 12-month program, but the goals are still exactly the same. So people who complete the LIFE program have seen improvements in their healthy eating behaviours, their physical activity levels, their body mass indexes have changed and gone down, their weight has gone down, their waist circumference has also gone down. And look, that might be only by a kilo or two, but regardless getting it off but then keeping it off is also the biggest challenge so those people have kept have lost a little bit of weight but they've kept it off that's a really important part in general on the by the end of the program 70 percent of participants achieved their fat and fiber intake so basically that means that they reduced the amount of fat they were eating and they increased the amount of fiber their physical activity levels increased, um, their weight reduced by an average of two to three kilos, their waist circumference reduced. Really importantly, their risk of type 2 diabetes reduced by 25 to 43%. So that's a really important one. That's what we're all here to do is to make sure that we don't end up being diagnosed with diabetes. And, of course, everyone really liked it and would do it again. 
So tonight's session is going over the intro, going over, over the basics. So what is diabetes, cardiovascular disease? Why are particular people at risk and others maybe not so much? How can we reduce our risk? What the goals are? And then at the end, we look a little bit at energy balance. So food intake, energy out, weight control, a little bit about portion sizes as well. So that's what we will be doing tonight. So to talk some statistics, some statistics, just to really paint the picture and show why the government actually funds this program and why they're really doing their very best to try and reduce the incidence rates of diabetes. More than one in four Australian adults has at least one of these lifestyle related diseases. So stroke, heart disease, diabetes. Every five minutes, one person is diagnosed with one, one of these things. So that's nearly 300 people 300 Australians are being diagnosed with diabetes each and every day. And heart disease and stroke is killing an Australian every 12 minutes. So, you know, it's just it's just a really big issue now. And it's just something that we need to put a lot of effort and energy into to try and turn some of these statistics around. But diabetes is not something that you develop overnight it's not a disease that you go from not having one day to then having the next day diabetes is something that um, develops and worsens over time so you actually this is why diabetes we're so lucky with it because we actually have a lot of time to intervene and to try and slow the rate down and ideally totally flip your risk and make sure that you're not at risk any longer but basically, diabetes is a condition where you have simply got too much glucose, too much sugar, moving through your bloodstream. So when we eat something, when we have something to eat, whether this is you know, basically anything, your body breaks it down into its usable form of energy, which is known as glucose. So we eat the food, it goes into our stomach. Our stomach breaks it up and breaks it down into its usable form, which is glucose. So then that glucose gets sort of shunted out in, into our system. It goes to our muscles, it goes to our brain, it goes to all of our organs. Basically, every single cell in our body needs to have glucose in it. On the cell is what we call insulin receptors. And it's the insulin receptors that is basically the gateway to glucose coming in and coming out. So what happens is if you are let's say, let's start with, with a normal healthy person first. So if you are exercising and you're eating a well-balanced fruit um, diet, sometimes you would be having sweet things or saturated fatty things or alcohol or things like that. Totally fine. Those insulin re receptors continue to work. Glucose goes in, glucose goes out. No issue. If over a long period of time, let's say that you are eating a diet that's really high in saturated fat or too much sugar or too much salt, you're smoking, you're drinking too much alcohol, what slowly starts to happen is that these insulin receptors become resistant. So they start saying to the glucose, mm -mm, we're not letting you in, we're not letting you out. So what happens then is that we've got cells that are screaming for the glucose, but instead the glucose is just swimming around in the blood because the insulin receptors are not working any longer. So that's what the terminology means when you hear that someone's saying they're insulin resistant. So they're finding it hard to, you know, their body is no longer responding to glucose the way that it should. So then when you go and have your blood test results, Results, they come back and they say, you've got a lot of sugar in your blood. So that's what's happening because the glucose is not being put into the cells as it should be. And then what happens is that then you become diagnosed with diabetes and then you start needing to have be given, giving yourself the insulin to then help help your body use that glucose properly again. So, but again, that happens over a long period of time, but that basically is what diabetes is in a nutshell. So that's what we're trying to avoid happening. That's why we're all here tonight. Some of the really common complications of diabetes are, so if we've gone down that path, we've become insulin resistant, then we've been diagnosed with diabetes, some of the complications are vision problems. So very quickly, people can feel as though their, blood, their vision is starting to deteriorate. Unfortunately, um, leg amputation and toe and feet and um, those types of parts it's very common for them to be um, needed to be amputated. Kidney failure, erectile dysfunction, nerve damage, 
Of course, it can lead to heart attacks and strokes. And then also there can be issues with teeth because of the um, sort of excess sugar and things in your gum and your mouth. So there's so many things. I think it, sometimes people feel as though oh, diabetes is not too bad. You just have a needle and have some insulin each and every day. But it's actually incredibly, incredibly hard disease to manage and to try and avoid all of these complications. Now, there are three different types of diabetes. So the one that we are really talking about and the one that we're really trying to avoid is type 2 diabetes. So that one is wholly and solely related to your lifestyle and it's the one that we can avoid. Type 1 diabetes, you're basically born with it generally. There will be some cases where someone will be diagnosed with it late onset, so it might be diagnosed as a teenager or a young adult. Um, but they cannot do any, anything about that. Gestational diabetes only occurs in women when they are pregnant. And again, there's not very much you can do about that. Type 2 diabetes is what we're all here for tonight and what we're trying to avoid desperately. So type 2 diabetes is the most common form and is highly preventable. So there's a lot of hope. We are absolutely able to avoid this. Some common signs and symptoms for people who may be heading down that path of being insulin resistant and going on to be diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. So increased thirst. Now, this is like not, you know, this is like an insatiable thirst. It's not just a, oh, I feel a bit thirsty today. It's a, I cannot get enough fluid into me. Um, feeling incredibly fatigued and tired, feeling really hungry all the time. You know, I can't get enough food into me. Of course, because you're drinking so much water, you're needing to go to the toilet so much. Um, infections, you can get really like sort of skin rashes and itching. You sort of feel like prickly in your skin. Really bad headaches all the time. Again, you're getting that starting to get sort of like vision issues. Vision is a bit blurry. Slow healing wounds, so if your skin doesn't heal like it once did, and then issues with your, you know, tingling and numbness of of feet and sort of extremities. So, those are some of the common sort of signs and symptoms that we see with people who are um, perhaps starting to go down the path of looking like type two diabetes. Cardiovascular disease, so basically heart disease. So again, this is something that doesn't just occur overnight. This is another disease that absolutely we can avoid through lifestyle and dietary management. Um, but once again, it is the slow buildup of what is known as plaque in our blood vessels in and around the heart. So basically, again, so things such as like a diet, high in saturated fat, high sugar, high salt, smoking, alcohol, not exercising, those things can lead to the buildup of the fatty tissue, the fatty acid in our arteries, which is known as the plaque, cholesterol plaque. And what happens then is that then if there is a random blood clot that's thrown off somewhere, it gets trapped in that sticky plaque. And then as soon as the heart cannot pump blood through any of its vessels, we see that part of that, you know, that part of the heart, that tissue starts to die, and then eventually it leads to a heart attack. So again, we can do something about this. So we don't have to. This is not a sentence. We can do something about it. Um, coronary heart disease. So basically, this is just as what I was sort of explaining just now. So it's a when a clot blocks one of the arteries and leads to a heart attack, which in lots of cases can be fatal. Ischemic stroke is when a blood vessel, vessel sorry, to the brain is blocked by a blood clot. So it's the same idea, but it's actually occurring in the brain. And then the hemorrhagic stroke occurs when there is an artery in your brain or breaks or bursts. So rather than a blockage, it's actually pressure building. And then eventually it just bursts and then you get a bleed on, on, on the brain and can lead to a stroke or, of course, it can be fatal as well. So what are the things that put you at high risk? Why are some people at greater risk than others? So the things that you cannot change, the things that you cannot do anything about, the non-modifiable risk factors are your age. So unfortunately, as you get older, you are just at greater risk of going on to develop these lifestyle diseases. Your gender, unfortunately for Rod, he is a male and males are just at higher risk. Full cool stop. Family history. If you have any family members who are 
um, who have been diagnosed with gestational diabetes or type 2 diabetes, your chance of then going on to develop either or is much higher as well. Your cultural background, there are just some cultures who unfortunately are at much greater risk of going on to develop type 2 diabetes. And if you have already been diagnosed with gestational diabetes throughout a pregnancy previously, your risk of then going on to develop type 2 diabetes is much higher as well. So those are the things we cannot do anything about, unfortunately. But the things that we can change are being inactive. If we're not doing any exercise, let's change that. Let's do something about it. Eating an unhealthy diet consistently, we know we can do something about that. If, those, if both those things are happening, then it's likely that you're then going to be carrying extra weight. So we can definitely do something about that. If you've got high blood pressure, if you're smoking, and if you've got high cholesterol. So as much as there's so many things that we can't change, there is so much that we can do. And those are the things that we're going to be focusing on. We can't do anything about our family or whether we've, or, you know, the culture that we've, we've grown up in, but absolutely we can do something about the excess weight we're carrying or the fact that we're smoking. So how can you reduce your risk? Commit to making small lifestyle changes. And I will keep coming back to this every single time. And if you've had your introductory session with me already, you know that we would have spoken about creating a couple of small, easy goals to get you started. We don't want to try and change everything in the first week because as soon as we try to do everything straight away, it becomes too hard and we very quickly feel uncomfortable and it feels hard and we don't, you know, we sort of fall off, off the bandwagon again. If we start with just small little goals and taking baby steps, we're much likely to see some success and then build on that success. So as I already mentioned, you can absolutely adjust your eating, your smoking habits, your drinking and your exercise routines. The things that will also help is, of course, attending all the live sessions so you can get all of the possible inf information. Be really positive with what you can achieve. It, it's going to feel hard at times, like it's going to be uncomfortable. No one wants to exercise every single time they, they have to, but you can do it. You can absolutely do the hard things because I tell you what, being diagnosed with type 2 diabetes is so much harder than having to make some changes to your exercise routine or your dietary patterns. And be a role model with, with family and friends. You know, be the person that says, hey, I'm going to go for a walk rather than just going out for a coffee for a catch up. Do you want to go for a walk today? Be the person that's actually showing the way and doing the good stuff. The life goals that we you guys don't really need to know so much about the numbers. Like I sort of will be more interested in these numbers, but for you guys, just to sort of get your head around the sort of life program goals that we are sort of always working towards is um, firstly, decreasing the amount of fat that you are consuming. Specifically though, we're really trying to look at reducing the amount of saturated fat and trans fat. So fats that are found in things like avocados and nuts and seeds and oily fish, they are absolutely fine. We are not worried about those. We're worried about the fats that are in deep fried foods, um, you know, baked goods from a supermarket, that type of thing, you know, confectionery, chocolate, sugary sweetened beverages, that kind of thing. That's what we're much more interested in looking at. Increasing the amount of fiber that you eat. One of the biggest protective things you can do to try and reduce your risk of diabetes is to increase the amount of fiber 100%. There's been so much great research done now. Um, to show that relationship. Decrease the amount of sodium or salt that you consume. Absolutely increase the amount of physical activity that you do. We're going to be aiming for 30 minutes per day. You might like to do it in different blocks. You know, you might do one one-hour walk every couple of days or something like that, but we're going to absolutely be working towards increasing our physical activity. And if all those things come together, then ideally we might be able to lose a little bit of weight as well. So the life program is going to help you make a plan to change your behavior. So it can feel pretty hard at the start. It can feel a bit uncomfortable and it can feel a bit hard, but slowly but surely that's what we'll be doing together. You're going to decide what you will do and when you will do it. When we were setting the goals, it's really important to be specific about them. We can't just sort of say, I'm going to walk once a week. You know, we need to really break it down and say, I'm going to walk on a Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. You know, commit a time and make sure that when you say you're going to do it, you do it. 
You're going to plan what you need to get ready and you're going to develop a plan to deal with the things that get in the way of your goals. There's always something that comes up, you know, so we need to make sure that we're able to bend and weave. So if we can't have our walk on the Tuesday afternoon like we planned, okay, well, when can I definitely do it then, you know, to make sure that we still prioritise our health and well-being no matter what comes up. Mm -hmm. So talking about energy balance and weight control, but basically when we really simplify um, energy consumption and food consumption, we can look at it like it's a set of scales. So basically if the amount of energy coming into our bodies, is, which is food, is e equal to the amount of energy that's going out, as in what's being burnt up when we're exercising and moving our bodies, our weight will remain stable. So our weight will remain at 75 kilograms and won't change. If, of course, we consume a lot of energy, perhaps too much for what our body requires, and then we're also then not doing any exercise, the scales will tilt and we will then start to put on weight because the energy that's coming in, we're not really using it, we're not really burning it off, but our body has to do something with it. It can't just get rid of it. it need, if it's not being burnt off, it has to store it. And, of course, it is only ever stored as fat. So that's what happens when we're consuming too much energy and not enough exercise. We will put on some weight and it's a really important one it's a really important point to make that it actually doesn't matter what you are eating if you are eating too much food full stop you will gain weight so even if you are eating you know even if you were eating an excessive amount of apples if it was still too much energy coming in and not enough energy going out you would eventually put on weight. So sometimes that can be the main thing for people. It's not what you're eating. It's the amount and it's the quantity. So I want you to become really aware of what are my portion sizes doing? Do I eat way too much? Do I get to the end of my meal and think, oh, I'm so full? You know, what's your routine and what, what's your habit? Start to really question yourself on the quantity of food that you're eating. And then, of course, on, on the flip side, if we're consuming, you know, less than what our body actually requires and then we're also, you know, exercising way too much, then, of course, our body has to get rid of all of the energy and stored weight and stored fat that it has to create the energy to then exercise. So, of course, we then go on, on to lose weight. So neither of those options are ideal. We don't want to be losing excessive amounts of energy, I mean, of weight, I should say. The end goal is really to get to that stabilizing point where we're happy and, you know, content with our weight. It's a good weight for our body and our health, but as well, it's also balanced. So the weight coming, I mean, the energy coming in is also equal to the energy going out. A stable weight is the sort of end goal, but it's just a good one just to sort of get your head around, around how much energy is coming in, what's going out. Where am I imbalanced? Is it too much energy coming in or is it actually that I'm not exercising enough? So for, for everyone, it'll be very different, but it's just a good one just to try and get your head around. Balancing your portion size, the plate model. So this is just a really simple um, model, yeah, just to sort of get familiar with because basically what we're trying to do, like I mentioned before, is to increase the amount of fibre that everybody is eating. And basically fiber is in the form of color. When, when we think of fruits and vegetables, we think of, you know, the rainbow. We think of eating all of that delicious color. So this is a good way to try and ensure that you're getting plenty of that. So four steps to help you serve up a healthier plate. Some For some people, simply changing the crockery that they're using can be really helpful. If you're, some, if you're a family that uses really big plates or really big bowls, we tend to fill them up, you know, you don't, whereas if you simply go down to a smaller plate or a smaller bowl, that can be sometimes really helpful just to simply reduce the amount of food that you are eating. So for some people, that can be quite helpful. But getting into the habit of filling half of your dinner plate specifically with vegetables. So when, when you're sitting down or when you're serving up meals, making sure that half of that plate is the colour, is the veggies. Now, this won't work for every single meal, of course, you know, something like a soup or a curry or a stir fry, you know, it's very, it's not always easy to split them all up. 
But basically, we're looking for the proportion, the largest proportion on your plate to be the color, to be the fiber, to be the veggies. And then we want quarter of that plate or bowl to be your lean protein. So whether that be chicken or steak or eggs or fish or whatever it might be, but quarter of that. And then the final quarter to be your whole grain foods. So your couscous, your brown pastas, your brown rices, those types of things. And that is a balanced plate. So you've got your protein, you've got your whole grains, and then you've got half of your plate with all of the color and all of the variety. So it's just a nice sort of simple easy way just to start thinking about what your plates are looking like. What we are going to do after tonight is I am going to ask each of you to actually do a food diary. Now, I, if you were a client of mine, if you're coming to see me as a client, you would need to do a seven day food diary. So if you would like to do seven days, fantastic. That's like the gold standard. If you would like to do less than that, that's absolutely fine as well. But I just ask that you absolutely do three days at least because three days ensures that you have a working day, but then you also have a weekend day as well. Because for a lot of people, we can have quite different habits between work days and weekend days. So anywhere between three and seven days would be ideal, please. Now, I'm not going to be asking you to come back in a fortnight's time and share these food diaries. This is very much a private thing for you and you only. Um, but it's just a really great opportunity to reflect and to actually identify what are my habits? How am I eating? What do I tend to do? When do I tend to overeat? When do I tend to skip meals? You know, what's going on? So it's just a great snapshot for yourself. So tracking your food and your exercise routine helps you to become more aware of what your patterns are. It helps you to identify where habits can be changed and also what things can be improved. Um, it's a nice, neat way to, you know, keep a record of what you have been doing really well, motivate you to achieve what you're planning to do. Just like I said, identify situations where you might overeat or you might try and avoid exercise. That's a really common one. And simply it helps you to keep track of your physical activity, meals and snacks. So you don't need to worry about um you don't need to worry about having an official food or physical activity diary. I'm very happy for you just to jot it down on any old piece of paper that you have. If you are a real IT person and you like to sort of use an app, these are some of the apps here that some people have recommended in the past. I'm, I'm a bit old school. I just write things down. So I'm not so up on what the apps are like, but these are some that people have used previously and really liked. So the Live Lighter Meal and Activity Planner, um, My Fitness Pal, Easy Diet Diary for the iPhone only. And then Map My Fitness is also another one for physical activity. So if you're somebody who likes to use an app, definitely, by all means, go for it and use those. But if not, a piece of paper and a pen is absolutely fine as well. So, yes, I am just asking that you please do do a food diary, please, and include a physical activity diary in there as well. Even if you just jot down, went for a 35-minute walk today after breakfast or, you know, whenever it might be. So just recording everything for at least three days up towards seven days would be amazing. So already wrapping up group session one, key messages. So absolutely, diabetes, heart disease and stroke are serious problems. They're not something that we should just be putting our head in the sand about. We need to do our very best to make sure that we can avoid being diagnosed with them. Together, you and me, we are going to reduce your risk. I do, yeah, as long as you're willing to put in the hard work, I am absolutely very able to support you in your own journey. It's so super important to maintain your health and functional capacity. At the end of the day, if you don't have your health, you actually do not have anything. So we really need to make sure that we're focusing on our health and well-being. Lifestyle changes make a real difference to your life in the future. And energy balance and portion sizes are key. I can't stress that enough. Really start to query how much food am I eating? What are my portion sizes like? What are the quantities like? Because just like I said earlier, in a lot of cases, it's actually not what people are eating. It's how much they are eating. So, oh, yeah, so you're going to do your food diary. Most of you, if you haven't got your blood test results to me yet, if you could, that would be wonderful, just so then I can add them to your file. Because toward the end of the program, it's always nice to then have another 
blood test just so then we can do a comparison. So please do get those to me if and when you can. Um, I don't do the Facebook groups anymore, so don't worry about that question because now there's the online life website. So um, that's pretty much what the Facebook group is. That's a great spot to go and um, ask your questions and read what other people are doing. I have already ordered everybody a hard copy of the participant workbook. So that I requested that today. So that will now be sent out to each and every one of you. It's a book like this. And it's just got all of the content in it. So rather than you trying to work on your computers with your email version of it, um, Diabetes Victoria will be sending you a hard copy. So that should be here in about a week's time. And in that, when you do receive it, um, there is some different readings so that you can do in there as well, just to, you know, just to really solidify the information that we've already been through tonight. And we will be catching up again in two weeks' time. So Monday, the 1st of May, again at 8 p.m. Um, the next session is all things nutrition. So it's a really full hour, that session, but it's really informative. And I think everyone will, yeah, absolutely get a lot out of it. So you survived. I hope that was okay and there was already a few little bits of information that you've already learnt. But does anyone have questions? There's no um, silly questions. I just want to say that I'm possibly um, an apology for the 1st of May. Oh, no worries, Suzanne. Yep. It's my birthday, so I think I really should have the day off. I think you should, absolutely. You, you have my blessing to enjoy that day. But Thank I'll you. I'll do the same thing again. I'll record it for you because it is a really important um, session and I wouldn't, I, yeah, I don't want you to miss it as such. So I'll do the same thing again and record it so then you can um, watch it in your own time. But, yes, please go and enjoy your birthday. That's yep. absolutely Thanks fine. Thanks very much. Um, does anyone else have any questions or any comments or anything they're not sure about? Is it all sort of clear as mud at this stage? Oh, no worries, Jerry. No problem, Georgie. You're very welcome. Um, so, yes, so please do your food diaries. Your workbook will be sent out to you in about a week or so. And you all have my email. You all know how to contact me. So please feel free to reach out at any time. Um, and, yes, I'm always very happy to ask anyone's questions, okay? But other than that, I will see you in a fortnight's time. Do your very best. Thank okay? you so Thank much. You. Thank you. You're so welcome. Eddie. Eddie. Thanks so much, Rod. See you guys. See Bye. you in a fortnight. <laughs>